Hi, this is Mr. A with another lesson in the How to Science Fair series. This one is about the Discovery Project. And the Discovery Project is what in my district we call sort of the research project um, version of the science fair. I know research project doesn't necessarily sound super exciting, uh, but Discovery I think is really appropriate because the whole point of doing a research project is to discover more about a topic that you're really interested in. So let's uh, discover a little more about the Discovery Project. Now, as always, you wanna make sure you check with your local science fair first, uh, see what the rules are for your district. Uh, some districts may not permit a Discovery type project. I know in my district, um, they, they cap it after a certain grade. So after uh, I think maybe sixth grade, uh, seventh and eighth graders um, are, are restricted to uh, inventions or experiments. So make sure that you are allowed to do a discovery project before you look into it in too much more detail as far as how to go about conducting it. Uh, but that said, I made this uh, presentation to try to be useful to students in any district because the idea of doing a discovery project is, is a pretty classic project and there's reasons for that I'll share in a moment. Um, you know, science is science. So no matter where you are, there's always gonna be kids who wanna learn about things that maybe aren't appropriate for experiments or inventions. And uh, that's, that's the goal of a discovery. You wanna learn about a topic of your choosing and you know the world's your oyster as far as that, any, anything you wanna study the universe, um, you can do it with the discovery project. And when you're done, your goal is then to share what you learned with uh, your audience through maybe a report, uh, maybe a poster board and a, a, often a visual aid of some sort. So in the process of completing a discovery project, here's some steps that I think are gonna help keep you organized and make sure that uh, you're getting the project done successfully and uh, enjoying it while you're at it. So you're gonna wanna make sure you find good resources. You're gonna wanna make sure you keep your facts organized. You're gonna write a report. You're gonna make a visual aid and then you're gonna tie it all together with a poster board. So I'll talk about each of those steps um, in order just to give you a little bit more insight how you might go about getting that done. Um, the first step is to find the information. I mean, really the first first step is to decide what you'd wanna do your topic on. If you're looking into a discovery project, that probably means you're already something, uh, you, you have something in mind that you're interested in doing. And again, you can do anything you want to uh, as far as discovery project, because you could even research uh, about pi. What, what is pi? Where did it come from? What does it mean? That doesn't really lend itself to an experiment. It doesn't really lend itself to an invention. Uh, but there's a lot of interesting history and facts behind the, uh, the value pi, and you can learn about that in a discovery project. Now, where can you find out information to help you learn about the topic that you're interested in, whether it's dinosaurs or the rainforest or uh, Jupiter uh, or volcanoes or, or whatever you're interested in, where are some solid places to go? Obviously, books um, are a great place to go. And uh, I, I did put those ahead of websites. I mean, websites are great. There's, there's nothing wrong with websites, uh, but this is a really good opportunity to find uh, some, some good books about the topic that you're interested in. Just sit and, and read them and, and, and learn about stuff. Um, have that book ready to go. You can flip it open anytime you want to. So books are a very, very, very good resource. Uh, websites obviously are great too. Um, you gotta be careful what websites you're using. Uh, you know, your uh, media specialist at your district you know, maybe it's uh, your librarian or your teacher uh, can sometimes help you sort of decide what websites are maybe more reliable websites to use for information than other ones are. And your district might have some rules like maybe you're not allowed to use Wikipedia or something. And that's, you know, that's up to your district. Uh, but if you're going to use websites, just make sure you're using them properly uh, as allowed by your fair. You might look at uh, documentaries or TV shows. Now with, with all the information that's available through a lot of streaming channels, uh, you might be able to find some information um, you know, via that route that helps you learn more about your topic in a really engaging and interesting way. Uh, and, and maybe even a, a route that may not be obvious is just talking to people who know about it. There are lots of experts in all kinds of fields. And with a little bit of research, you might be able to find maybe at a local college um, or, or something along those lines, someone who has some more information about the topic that you're interested in studying and might be able to answer some questions as well. Uh, make sure you do your legwork before you reach out to people with questions. Don't just email them and say, please tell me everything you know about subject X. 
Uh, show them that you've done a little work in advance, that you that you know a little bit about what you're talking about, but there's some things you don't understand and you're wondering if they could help you out to understand this as well. They'd probably be super excited because if they're studying it, that's because they really, really love that topic and they probably really love talking to other people about it as well. Uh, plug here for your local library, whether that's in your school or whether that's in your community. Uh, the library is almost always a great place to start any discovery project. They have uh, books on, you know, obviously uh, almost any topic you can imagine, uh, but also in the in the youth section, they probably also have just books on science fair itself. So there's a great place to look for information about uh, the topic you're interested in and also then how to uh, turn that into a good science fair project as well. So when you're getting information, because that's what you're going to be basing your project on, it's really important to keep that information organized. You want to keep track of what you learned and where you got that information from. Uh, in, in my district, we have a special document that we use that, that students can write down the, the name of the source and, and what interesting information they learned from it. Um, you might have some variation of that on your own in your district. If you don't, just maybe take some notes in a, in a notebook or maybe in a, in a document on your computer, but you wanna make sure as you're going through that information, you're, you're, you're keeping good track of the information you're finding and where you're getting it from, because you're gonna to need to know that later. And if you don't take good organized notes to begin with, it makes the later steps a lot harder trying to get your project finished. Also remember that you have to give credit to the sources that you get information from. You're doing a discovery project because you're not an expert in this topic, uh, but other people are, and you want to make sure you give them credit for the information that they shared with you. Your district might have special rules about how they want you to cite the information. Citing information just means explaining where you got it from and the details of where you found it. So if somebody else wants to get that information, they can go and find it there as well. So make sure you check with your district about rules for how to cite where you got your information from so that you make sure you're getting cre giving credit where credit is due to the people that have researched the same topics that you're interested in. Now, uh, in my district, the discovery selection does involve writing a report. Um, we're not trying to, to crush your spirits, but the idea is that a report is just a really good, effective way to, to share what you've learned. And you're going to write your report in your own words. Uh, we, we understand that it's um, a school child, uh, a school kid writing it. Um, it. It doesn't have to be like super beautiful uh, words and everything like that. It's just you explaining the cool stuff that you found out. So, you know, when you're typing this report, I always kind of like to, for kids to think of as if they're explaining it to their friends. Um, you know, if, if somebody knew that you were interested in dinosaurs and they asked you to talk about the latest dinosaur that you were uh, looking into, you wouldn't sit down and read a website to them for, for four minutes. Uh, you would summarize what you understand and share it with them. That's what a report should do. It should summarize the information that you've learned and share it in a way that makes sense for you, the person who's telling it. And when you're writing your report, uh, yeah, how long do you make it? Eh, I mean, again, that depends on your district. Uh, where I teach, the, the general rule we say is, is maybe around one page for every grade you're in. So if you're in fifth grade, maybe around five pages. And again, we're not picky about word counts or font sizes or anything like that. Uh, the idea is if this is something you're interested in, you should be excited to share what you learned anyway. So hopefully it's not like pulling teeth to write a report. Um, just as a side note, you know, if you really, really, really don't want to write a report, maybe you should choose another type of project. Maybe do the invention, uh, maybe do the experiment, because um, usually the discovery project involves some sort of report. And if you know you don't want to do it, then don't put yourself in that situation. Pick another one. There's tons of great stuff to choose. All right. Um, I, I know uh, when, when my judges take a look at uh, discovery projects, they are more concerned with what your report is saying than specifically like the grammar and the spelling and, and all that stuff. Now, again, that's not that that's not important because when you're presenting information to somebody else and there's a lot of spelling errors in it and there's a lot of grammar errors and there's sentences that just kind of stop randomly and uh, you know, those kind of things distract from what you're trying to say. So if you're not like the best uh, at, at writing stuff uh, like that, you know, get some help from your parents, get some help from one of your teachers at school, maybe show them, you know, your, your rough draft and say, hey, 
um, you have some ideas on how I can write this a, a little more cleanly. Again, we don't want to make it a really laborious English exercise, and there's nothing wrong with being able to communicate effectively in the sciences, but you do want to make sure that it's, that it's clean enough that people can read it without getting distracted by other stuff. Um, in the context of doing a discovery project in my district, we encourage kids to do a visual aid. And a visual aid is a chance for you to you know, sort of step outside the books a little bit and be a little bit more creative in terms of trying to do something to bring your to research to life. Uh, we pro uh, prohibit kids from using a kit that's already done. You know, like, for example, if you were studying the human body, um, at least when I was a kid, there was something I think was called the invisible man or something. And it was just plastic model that you could put together and had all the organs in there and stuff like that. I know a lot of times in the hobby stores, there's a like a, a solar system uh, kit ready to go with styrofoam balls of different sizes that you paint and things like that. I mean, those are great. They're fantastic. But at least from our perspective in a, in a science fair, that's not what we're interested in seeing. We want to see your creativity and your knowledge put into action. So we'd rather see something built from scratch than something you, you buy or order online. Now, in that context, uh, th there's tons of different ways to do a visual aid. Uh, some examples of visual aids that I've seen over the years. Uh, the diorama is, is a really classic example. That's like taking a shoebox or something and putting some plastic plants in it and making models of whatever it is you're trying to show, um, or maybe a cutaway of different layers of the earth. You know, whatever it is you're trying to show, a little bit of clay, a little bit of paint, and uh, you can really convey a lot of information uh, in, in that one sort of setup there. Uh, it, but it doesn't have to be like necessarily arts and crafts. It could be you collecting information from the environment and bringing it back there as well. Uh, a student did a project on different kind of animals that live it, around his house, and he went outside and he collected uh, plaster moldings of animal prints in mud and had those uh, set up as a display and said, hey, here's how I identified each of these from what I learned about, you know, what these paw prints actually mean. Um, another really cool one was a student did one on spider webs. And so they went around uh, and looked around in forest and, and all kinds of different places and took pictures of spider webs that showed the different examples of the traits that they talked about in their presentation. So you can get pretty creative with your visual aid and I have a lot of fun with it as well. Also, uh, consider making it interactive. If you've been to a museum recently, you, you, you probably know that the exhibits that ask you to like lift up a flap or you know try to match different things together, those are a lot more engaging and interesting. So maybe even consider making your visual aid into a sort of game that uh, people who come up to your presentation could try out and learn a little bit more about it while they're having a little bit of fun at the same time. Now, uh, then we, uh, depending on the format of your science fair, you might also have to do a poster board to go along with it. Uh, the poster board is always a bit of a, a question because kids are like, well, I wrote my report and I've got this visual aid. Like, what, what's there left to do? I've already shared all my information. What do I need a poster board for? I like to think of a poster board as kind of an advertisement. Uh, you know, think of it as, you know, you go to maybe go see a movie uh, and there's the trailers ahead of time that give you like a little bit of some of the exciting book, uh, exciting information that you're looking at. Uh, books have summaries on the back to try to get you engaged. So consider your poster board to almost be an advertisement for what you learned. Uh, share some of the highlights in interesting ways. And people who get engaged by your poster board are going to stop, take a look at your visual aid, maybe read your report. Uh, so it's a way to sort of pull people in. Uh, with, with the highlights of the information that you covered. And that's the discovery process in a nutshell, obviously. Uh, you know, there's a lot more to it when you're actually uh, in the nitty gritty, but that gives you a good overview about how you'd go about completing a discovery project. Again, you want to make sure you find uh, good resources to get your information from, make sure they're reliable information. And again, a great place to go is your library. Keep your facts organized as you're collecting it. That's going to make your job a lot easier when you're trying to summarize what you learned. Uh, you know, get your report done. Again, try to scale your report with your ability. If you're not uh, super great at writing long essays, then write a short essay well. That's fine. You know, just get the information across. Get a visual aid together to help show people what you learned. 
and tie it all together with a poster board that brings out the most exciting parts of what you discovered in your science fair project. And that's it. Um, the discovery project is a really great way to engage with the science fair. Uh, it, again, it's different than an invention. It's different than an experiment, but it's different because it has to be because not everything that you'd maybe wanna learn about in a science fair is appropriate to do an invention about. Not everything's appropriate to do an experiment with. And that's where discovery comes in uh, and really gives you an opportunity to find out lots of exciting stuff about things that you wanna learn about. So I'm excited that you're thinking about doing the science fair and good luck with your science fair project this season. Mm -hmm.